Hey everyone! In my last couple of videos, I talked about my mini verb module, which is a Euro Rock Reverb module I designed around the Daisy Seed platform. Since then, I've received some shoutouts and feedback from a couple of folks online who built their own mini verbs too, which is pretty cool. I love seeing my designs being used by other builders. There were, of course, some issues. First of all, I seem to have uploaded the wrong files for the panels by mistake. The one on GitHub didn't have a hole for the LED that was easily fixed by a drill but I already uploaded the correct files. I didn't use IC sockets for my build so I didn't notice this but my buddy Chris pointed out that using those made the layout a bit cramped, especially when using the Wima caps. It's still doable but this is one thing I'll have to consider in my next designs. I've mentioned in my mini synth overview video at the beginning of the year that these modules have been my first PCB design projects, so I'd love to share everything I learn in the process. And I have a lot of those in this next one. But first, let me thank my sponsor for this video, PCBWay. They've been providing me with free PCBs for this entire series since the beginning. All of my files will always be open source, but you can order the boards for the Miniverb version 1.1 directly through their website. I'll add a link to those in the description. This is version 2.0 of the Miniverb. It's much smaller than the original one. It's only 4 HP wide. It's just wide enough to fit a daisy seed board. It also has a CV input but I'll talk about that later. I was able to shrink it that much because I switched to surface mounted components. To demonstrate, this is a through hole resistor and this is its SMT equivalent. It looks like a tiny speck of dust. I've learned that there are a lot of options when it comes to SMT packages. Most of what I used is called 0603 and some bulk capacitors that are 0805. That's Imperial, don't confuse it with metric. From what I've heard, these are the smallest packages most people are comfortable hand soldering with. For the ICs, I used SOIC and the smaller SOT23. There were a couple of issues with my design here though. Overall, the effect works fine. I was able to use it as a reverb and the pots work great. However, the CV input doesn't work. So I went back to my KiCad files to try and figure out why. This is when I realized the importance of double checking datasheets. A datasheet is basically where a manufacturer describes in detail everything about a part. This includes the pinouts, voltage ratings, sample applications, and many more. For this project, I have three main ICs, and two of them, apparently, I used wrong. First, the LM4040 here is used to produce a negative 10 volt reference voltage. Apparently, I was using the wrong symbol for it on KiCad. All the pin numbers were wrong, so I had to get creative with how I mounted the chip. Again, the lesson here is check the datasheet. Another IC that I had wrong was the MCP2001 op-amp. I didn't realize then that there were three different SOT23-5 packages for it. MCP6001, MCP6001R, and MCP6001U. The footprint that I had in my design was for the MCP6001, while the chip I bought was the U variant. It will take me a while to order parts online, so again, I had to get creative with how I mounted an op-amp to the circuit. Eventually, I found out that the CV circuit that I drew up initially didn't work as expected. I destroyed a couple of op-amps before I found out. That was a very bad day. I decided it was time to get some rest and try out the circuit again on breadboard. But I'll talk about that some other time. Thank you so much for watching my videos. If you'd like to help me do more projects like this, please consider joining my Patreon. I'll be sharing a lot of behind the scenes stuff and you can also get access to my Discord server. That will be it for now. See you on the next video.